All right, so on to uh, clutch and, and flywheel dampers. So a common question is why is uh, dampening required within the clutch and flywheel system? Um, so the answer really to improve the driving comfort, um, improved NVH. So when we refer to NVH, uh, noise, vibration and harshness. Uh, so from a, uh, a vehicle a manufacturer's perspective, uh, they want the uh, they want the vehicle, the cabin uh, noise to be as, as quiet as possible. So their, their directive to companies such as Exidy is, uh, we want you to manufacture a clutch that absorbs uh, and dampens as much NVH as possible. And also we have here limit the possibility of mechanical damage by reducing uh, shock loading through the drive line. So I will talk about uh, briefly about uh, the three common uh, types of clutch uh, disc that uh, Exidy uh, manufactures. Uh, the first one's a conventional uh, sprung disc with a low angular uh, displacement. Uh, so this is a typical type of disc that um, we would pack in a, a petrol uh, a clutch kit for a petrol application uh, for typically four or, or six torsion springs. Um, it's a fairly simple design um, and um, it's quite suitable, quite adequate uh, for uh, gasoline or petrol uh, type engines. Um, the advantages of the conventional uh, sprung centre disc increase the driving comfort um, and also um, absorbing noise and vibration. Uh, but the dis disadvantages of this conventional uh, style disc, uh, not enough ab ability to dampen um, NBH in late model vehicles. Uh, so they're fine for um, uh, modern, simple petrol vehicles, but we wouldn't typically use this conventional uh, sprung centre disc um, in a diesel. So this is the characteristics of the conventional uh, disc. Uh, so we, we typically term this a, uh, a single uh, stage disc. So you can see, if I hover my mouse over the image here, so this is a uh, this is a part of an, uh, the engineering uh, diagram uh, showing that uh, there is a single stage of dampening. So this is typical of a, a clutch disc that we would use uh, in a petrol uh, application. If it's re if we require a more complex um, disc, complex uh, construction of disc for a typically for a diesel vehicle or a, um, a petrol uh, vehicle, which has uh, high uh, NVH, um, we can select the silent type uh, disc. So uh, this particular disc, you can see in the image here that this little hairspring, this is what we termed the first stage. So this is this area here, and that's what provides the uh, dampening uh, at idle quietening at idle. And then the second stage, so that's our first stage, and the second stage from seven degrees to 18 degrees of movement is when this uh, spline hub takes up on this second stage of torsion springs. So the silent type disc is, is quite common and um, very popular um, for uh, dampening noise and vibration in uh, uh, diesel applications. And finally, we move to what we term a wide angle damper uh, clutch plate, or in the ASIN range, it's known as a NVR uh, type disc. Uh, so in the case of high uh, noise and vibration, uh, we would look to uh, produce by the vehicle, uh, or within the vehicle, uh, we'd be looking for a WAD uh, type disc, uh, which has a uh, very wide uh, angular displacement, um, softer springs and um, a, a slightly different construction that allows uh, the damper to rotate uh, 30 to 40 uh, degrees in um, angular rotation. So it's vastly improved driving uh, comfort is an advantage. Um, disadvantage, um, it's not able to dampen as good as a uh, dual mass flywheel system, uh, but it's uh, in terms of a clutch disc uh, damper, uh, it has the best capacity 
uh, to dampen noise and vibration. So we've got an image here. Now this is the wide angle damper uh, type disc. And you can see uh, this particular disc we'd refer to as a three stage damper. So you can he see here, this is idle stage. So first stage, uh, second stage, out to about 26 degrees of angular movement. And the final stage out to uh, 28. Uh, and that is the three stages within within the damper mechanism. Uh, it's interesting to note too that you can see typically in a uh, clutch plate, uh, you'll have some stock pins that hold the disc together here. Um, in a wide angle damper uh, disc, the stock pin is recessed. So it sits very low and the uh, spline hub can actually travel over the top of that uh, stop pin, which is increasing the um, angular movement of the damper. So they're the main uh, three clutch uh, discs we use in our range. And um, when we're talking about um, uh, single mass flywheel clutches, uh, we typically always use a silent type uh, clutch disc or a wide angle damper uh, type clutch disc. Uh, we would never use a conventional type disc in a single mass flywheel simply because it doesn't have the um, dampening uh, capacity, a suitable dampening capacity, and it will re relate um, or result in um, an, a noise and vibration trans transmitted into the cabin. So we can see here, this is our um, clutch kit for the Nissan Navara, and uh, we're using a wide angle damper uh, clutch plate in this single mass uh, conversion. With regard to dual mass flywheels, um, again, it's another another step or transition uh, up from the wide angle damper clutch plate, and it has a much greater uh, angular uh, movement. So we say up to about a hundred degrees there. So it's a much more effective um, solution for dampening um, torsional vibrations and noise noise uh, vibration and harshness, uh, particularly in uh, diesel applications, uh, but more and more uh, late model petrol vehicles have been uh, fitting, uh, fitted with uh, dual mass flywheels. The disadvantage is they're more costly uh, than a uh, conventional uh, clutch system and the DMF, we would uh, recommend replacing the DMF each time um, the clutch, clutch is replaced. So it's, more costly, um, but from a positive point, um, it's much better at dampening um, noise and vibration. So with regard to uh, dual mass flywheels, uh, there's a few different manufacturers, including Exidy. And we have Exidy on the left-hand side of the image here, we have uh, Exidy, uh, Valio, and LUK type, uh, which incorporate, all incorporate a fairly um, similar uh, design with a large uh, arc spring and the sax type at the bottom of the uh, screen there uh, with the uh, smaller um, torsion springs and, and planetary gears. Approximately 50% of all new cars are fitted with a DMF now. Uh, we've got over I would say 260, 270 different references in our uh, range now. And from all accounts, there's over 100 uh, million vehicles in the, the global market running around with, um, with dual mass flywheels in them. And it's, as I mentioned earlier, it's come about because of advancements in vehicle design. So I think simply put, um, the, the vehicles are so, uh, so refined now, uh, low speed engines, you know, other design innovations, as we mentioned there, um, has necessitated the uh, development of the dual mass flywheel. The, the conventional uh, clutch disc, uh, it's just surpassed the ability of the uh, conventional clutch disc to, um, to dampen um, uh, noise and vibration produced by, by modern vehicles. Um, so we've, we've moved to dual mass flywheel. So um, as you're, I'm sure you're aware, we, we're offering a, um, the full range of the dual mass flywheels, but also um, we're also developing um, a single mass uh, file range. And um, at the moment, uh, we're working on uh, a Holden Colorado 
um, single mass conversion that's kind of, kind of in the prototyping stage at the moment. And um, we're also looking at the Mitsubishi uh, Triton. Um, so these things are uh, ticking along in the background and um, hopefully available in the market soon. And here's just a, a couple of images of um, the Nissan Patrol uh, dual mass flywheel kit, Wereksity's OE, and our uh, single mass flywheel conversion.